Welcome back TCS viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and today we have the Panasonic LX100 here for you. A very exciting compact point and shoot with a very big sensor. We're going to take this out, see what it can do and see how it compares against the RX100 Mark III which is sort of the king of this market right now. Now at first when I looked at the LX100 specs and I saw that the lens was fixed and I was like, we have a four thirds sensor on here but no interchangeability of the lenses, that really sucks. But actually it's a very interesting thing. By integrating the lens and using a multi aspect sensor, we can now get a camera with a much smaller design and a very fast lens. Now what's going on here is you've got a standard four thirds size sensor but you've got a lens that uses different crop factors to achieve different focal lengths and different aspect ratios. 3, 2, 16 by 9, 4, 3, you basically get the same amount of megapixels and the same diagonal cross section. One thing you got to keep in mind though is the trade-off, this is a 16 megapixel sensor, it's oversized to be able to accommodate all these aspect ratios but you're only ever getting roughly just over 12 megapixels so what's great about that is we get different aspect ratios and we get a hell of a lens, I think it's a very interesting trade-off. Now as you can see it's raining pretty good and no this camera's not weather sealed but I am finding some things I'm appreciating right away. Things like, for example, easy one-handed operation, which is excellent when you're trying to hold an umbrella at the same time. The other great thing is this macro kind of capability. This is one of the closest focusing capabilities I've seen on a camera with a big sensor like this. And that's all thanks to that integrated lens. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Now at the front of the camera we have this excellent 24 to 75 range 1.7 to 2.8 lens. You've got great manual focus control here, aperture dial which is really nice to turn, and you also have a lug, bayonet, for additional accessories in the future. What's great about this lens, you got to remember we still have a micro four thirds size sensor behind it and we're getting that excellent light. You know if you look at something like the Panasonic G 12 to 35 2.8, that lens is a thousand dollars on its own. This lens is faster and we're still going to get comparable low light performance. It is a very interesting achievement. So again, this camera is working out real well for a day like today with this one handed operation, this easy grip. The aperture ring is a classic turning aperture ring and I like the big metal lugs on the side because I can do it one handed. It lets me get my focus, get my control and fire and then when I turn off, the lens goes away, I'm ready to go. So you got some nice disgusting couches here as a visual backdrop but it'll be interesting to shoot here in just a bit. But you know, looking at the screens and our scene here on them, you know, I'm going to say this three inch screen, it's fairly run of the mill, 920,000 dots, you know, nothing amazing, no articulation. The color is beautiful though. When it comes to the viewfinder, this is a nice touch up here. I mean, the LVF is good to have. Uh, and you know, the RX100 Mark III is pretty much the only other camera in this sort of size that has one built in. But when we look inside here, there is a little bit of lag and you definitely get color smearing because of those three layers. So it's not incredibly sharp. It's functional though, it works. I mean, you know, it's good to have on there. Still, all in all, not the most impressive part of this camera. All right, so while we further explore the handling on the LX100, again, this grip is very secure and safe and I don't feel like my thumb's gonna hit anything. I don't want it to, I like that. The dials on the camera, very tactile, very firm. You're gonna enjoy that. The aperture has got great click stops and our exposure comp dial is in a classic position. It works well. On the back of the camera, it's pretty typical Panasonic, a very familiar layout. Three customizable buttons are nice. But these two buttons on the top of the camera, they kind of piss me off. I'm gonna be honest with you here. First off, this filter button right here is in a perfect position to be customized for so many more useful things. But so far, with the firmware we've got now, we can only do the filter effect. These are cheesy. I don't think many people are going to use them. We don't even get cute dessert. We're going to miss that from the old Panasonic. So that's unfortunate. And then this IA button, the instant automatic, is even worse. This intelligent auto button is so easy to hit. You don't even know that you've hit it and then you find that you're in full automatic and then nothing works the way you want it to. I can't tell you how many times I've already taken photos in intelligent automatic when I didn't want to. So I hate that feature. I hope they let us customize it.
All right, I am sorry everybody, but it is obligatory water drop on leaf shot time, but it does give us a good opportunity to check out the thin depth of field on this. This is shooting wide open at 1.7, and we get that great thin depth of field, not only because of that fast aperture, but because of a fairly large sensor. Again, I'm gonna zoom in telephoto here now, take the same shot, and again, killer thin depth of field. So with this fast lens, we get a very SLR-like kind of look. The LX100's barring the processing engine from its big brother, the GH4, and that's a great thing because it gives us very good processing. It gives us the great autofocus with the DFD, the distance from defocus, and that makes this camera incredibly responsive. But we also find that the JPEG engine might even be a little bit better than the GH4. We're noticing that images out of the camera have great color and sharpness right out of the box. So all in all, that's a big plus here. Oh, and of course, while we're talking about similarities to the GH4, we do get the great Wi-Fi control here from the GH4. It's very well implemented. You're gonna enjoy it. Of course, one of the big advantages to having a big sensor, especially in comparison to the ARX100 Mark III, is the ability to crank up our ISO and get these nice low light shots without too much noise. And the LX100 does a great job in low light. But I also have flash. I'm gonna try that here. It is an accessory flash. They do include it, but I hate having these extra things, having to carry them around. I would have preferred it built in. And of course, it's a bit slow to recharge. Still, we get a nice result. All right, it's time to look at ISO performance on the LX100. We're gonna start here at 800 ISO. And as you guys can see, the new processing engine is doing a fantastic job coupling with that larger sensor. Now again, we are cropping the sensor with this new lens, but we're still getting a large four-thirds sensor, especially in comparison to something like the RX100 Mark III. And while talking about the RX100 Mark III, let's compare the two here at 3200 ISO. You can see that the larger sensor on the LX100 does give it a definite advantage. Keep in mind as well that you get a maximum ISO of 25,600, whereas something like the Mark III can only go to about 12,800. All right, so there's our two competitors, the RX100 Mark III and the LX100 from Panasonic. Both cameras very similar price points. So where are the differences? Certainly a size advantage, but also a sensor size difference. Check out these photos here. I mean, the Sony RX100 Mark III has got great resolution with that 20 megapixel sensor, but the LX100 is gonna give you faster autofocusing, better dial-based controls, better low light performance, and I would even say a larger and nicer to use viewfinder. I mean, they both have their strengths, guys, but overall the LX100 is made for photographers. Hey guys, it's Jordan, the video specialist, trying to talk over the chainsaw that's going on back there inconveniently. But let's take a look at the LX100's video features. When it first got announced, we were all really excited because it's basically GH4 image quality in a really small package with an amazing lens. It'd be an amazing B cam, and the image is gorgeous. It's very, very sharp. Uh, I went out and shot a bunch of low light stuff with it. You can see some examples of it here, and it's every bit as good as a GH4. It's really impressive, especially with that f1.7 lens. So the image quality on the LX100 is beautiful, uh, but that said, it feels like it's kind of an afterthought. I'm, a lot of the controls on it seem kind of slapped together. Like when I hit the record button, that's when it applies my 4K crop. So I can't actually see what my frame looks like until I hit the record button. As well, it doesn't have the cinema profiles that you found on the GH4, and even the FZ1000 had their Cine D and Cine V profiles. Those are missing, and I hope that's something they add in firmware. Also, in terms of setting the aperture, it's beautiful that it's got the control on the dial, but it's always clicky, so I can't do smooth exposure changes during a clip. Uh, the manual focus works great for it. It's a really nice ring to work with, but shutter speed, if you look at the top dial, it moves in full stop increments. So to adjust them, uh, kind of fine tune them, I have to use the little back shutter speed dial and it's really easy to spin. So I'd find myself using the wrong shutter speeds all the time shooting. And it's great quality, but you gotta kind of work to get it because the camera's not optimized for videographers. All right, guys, so I know we've had some pretty crappy weather here to deal with on our LX100 review, but all in all, this camera really was brilliant despite all that, especially when it comes to image quality. The camera's also got a great fit and finish. It handles well, it feels great. The only issues with cost cutting or little problems are minor. Yeah, some buttons I didn't like on the top. The EVF and the screen don't blow us away. And there's some movie features we wish were better implemented, but all in all, the camera's well designed and it handles amazingly. And really, you gotta remember the most important thing. We are getting, for the price, an amazing sensor, great image quality and processing, 
the focusing is as good as you're going to want it. And this lens and combined sensor with aspect ratios give us a very interesting fix. 12 megapixels, I mean, we're trading that for great overall image quality, especially in low light as well. I think you're going to love the LX100. It's made for photographers, and any sort of cost cutting is done in a very sensible way. Check this out. It's coming out. You will love it. Hey guys, it's Jordan again. Now, as you know, I'm always looking for the latest and greatest video tech, and Panasonic for this episode was nice enough to ship us a pre-production X1000, kind of their new prosumer camcorder for me to take a look at. And on paper, it's actually really interesting. What's really cool is it's shooting 4K internally right to card, and I can shoot 60p, so I can do high resolution slow-mo with this, and that's actually a very rare feature, not even on Panasonic's GH4. Other nice thing, we've got a big 20 times zoom lens. It's a nice all-in-one lens, so I'm not changing stuff. It's a big range for shooting telephoto, and I've got three control rings on it. Just like a traditional pro camera, it's really easy to work with. So then as soon as I started shooting the episode, I started running into issues. Now for starters, this camera is made by Panasonic's consumer division, so it uses the same interface as their consumer cameras, which means it's almost entirely touchscreen driven. It was a cold rainy day and I was trying to hold an umbrella. You can imagine how that could be a little bit difficult. Also, it's got a histogram, which is really handy, but it sticks it right in the middle of the frame and maybe you can move it. For the life of me, I tried for a while. I couldn't find out a way to do it. Also, the focus assist function on it gives me peaking, punches in focus, but I found it actually really soft when it zoomed in, so it was actually really tough to gauge focus. I had an easier time just shooting without the focus assist turned on, zoomed back all the way and just manually pulling focus like a DSLR. Kind of defeats the entire purpose. So I was already a little bit annoyed with the camera just from the shoot, but it's when I got back to editing I really ran into issues. The skin tones were honestly pretty awful coming off of it. We had some green flecks, especially in shadowy areas and a complete lack of detail. Now, I was shooting in the regular Cine-D profile with the Cinema Matrix, same settings I use on the GH4 or the old Panasonic AF100, and checked the skin detail settings, and they were default as well. But you can see, detail all around Chris, none in his face whatsoever. I hope it's because this is a pre-production camera, because otherwise, this is not a camera I would ever use for any other shoots. So, interesting experiment, but I think next week we'll be back to one of our standard cameras.